here again with Aaron for a third time in his 2015 Lexus RCF. Uh, I drove to Cars and Coffee in it this morning and we're driving back now so I've been able to experience the car for probably about 25 or 30 miles. So I've got some pretty good first impressions on it. All right, so we got a 2015 Lexus RCF here. It's the five liter V8, 467 horsepower, 389 pound feet of torque. Um, I did buy this with my own money from, uh, from a lemonade stand. That's a sarcasm if you didn't pick that up. If you guys didn't get that in the last video, <laughs> these are not his cars. I'm trying as hard as I can to be sarcastic, but people just keep believing me. Stop believing me. <laughs> it's got 15, well, 14.9 inch Brembo brakes on here. And as you know, Oh yeah, we had to stop pretty quickly early, earlier. Those things stop on a dime. It is, they're impressive. One gripe I have about this car so far is the exhaust. Uh, there is that interior noise, that uh, like that artificially generated interior noise when you get above, what is it, 4,000 RPM? Yeah, I think so, around there. Yeah, but outside the car, it's extremely quiet. Uh, you know, you can't really hear much. <laughs> Yeah, this is a, it's a luxury grand touring coupe more than anything. So I would say that most of their customer base is probably gonna be a little bit older and they're gonna want quiet with a little bit of engine noise. I think that's where everything's going towards now, like BMW is doing it. And yeah. All the luxury brands are doing it. And so. uh, we were talking about this earlier. If you want to make it louder, you can just get a Borla exhaust, you were saying, mm -hmm. and this thing would sound insane yeah uh, but yeah for everyday drivability most of these people just want something that's more luxurious than loud and rambunctious so going back to luxury it's extremely comfortable on the inside you have some nice alcantara over the gauges and stuff and you've got some soft touch leather and other nice materials throughout the center console and dashboard uh you have your nice analog watch, which looks very nice. It's very classy versus just a normal uh, clock like you see in most cars. This has some good technology in it too. We got blind spot monitoring. We have cross traffic detection, yep. front and back parking sensors. Okay, so and the blind spot monitors is something that's pretty big for something like this because mm -hmm. it's a coupe. So you have a massive blind spot over your shoulder and stuff. So having that nice little Thing is very nice when you're trying to change lanes. Also, uh, sunroof, you know, comes. I think it comes standard. Uh, Mark Levinson sound system sounds amazing. Yeah, it <laughs> sounds really well. Uh, I was using the armrests earlier, and we had the bass turned up, and it felt like it was massaging my arm. The bass was so strong, uh, very crisp and clear. Another gripe I have is the center, like touch, or it's not a touch screen, but the center screen here. Uh, there's like maybe like a 10 inch space for it, but the screen is maybe only seven inches six or seven inches mm -hmm. So I'm not sure why the screen is a bit smaller uh, Aaron said it's a bit outdated which I can agree with especially when you look at newer cars and what they have uh, But you know, it's still it looks nice uh, You have some carbon fiber accents as well, which go great I mean, there's just so many different materials in here and they all they blend together really well and it's all just so comfortable and it's a great driving and passenger experience. Okay, so uh, you turn the switch to the left for eco mode. I think they just threw eco mode in here to get rid of the uh, uh, gas guzzler attacks. I'm not sure though, don't quote me on that. But eco mode's really soft, everything's soft, throttle, suspension, steering. Yeah. It's all very smooth. Push the button down and you go into normal mode, so this can be used for everyday driving. Um, the car automatically defaults to automatic or normal mode when you start it up. It doesn't stay in sport mode. Turn it one to the right and you get sport mode. And that kind of, um, you get better engine response, throttle response. Um, I think the transmission shifts a little bit uh, faster. Steering's a little bit heavier. Uh, suspension might change, I'm not sure on that one. But Sport Plus, one more turn to the right. Sport Plus is the most aggressive setting that they have on here. 
Um, it holds the gears for longer, makes the transmission shift very fast and crisp. Yeah, the throttle response is very quick, very quick. Um, and it's just overall louder in here. Next to the uh, RPMs, you have a nice little screen that'll tell you, you know, MPG, stuff like that. Just general basic information about the car. Styling-wise, this thing looks freaking amazing. Uh, I love the Lexus headlights, you know, how you have that almost like that Nike swoosh type of <laughs> thing on the yeah, bottom. Yeah, the check mark. And, and then, then it's got the uh, triple beam. Yeah, the triple, triple beams. Uh, that square. looks freaking amazing. The, yeah. the uh, tail lights look good, almost how they like, it almost looks like they took two different tail lights and then like stuck them together and there's overhang on both sides, which it's just like, it looks modern, it looks futuristic. Uh, and then obviously you have the quad exhaust, which look awesome as well. Uh, you have a little bit of a hood uh, indentation there for like some airflow, I guess. Yeah, it's functional uh, hood heat extractor, I guess. Yeah, and then uh, there's some little vents on the side here for uh, brake cooling and whatnot. Uh, yeah, I think one one is a transmission cooler. Okay. The interior is the headroom. So I'm 5'11", I'm sitting in here like I normally would drive. And my seat's at a pretty low position. I only have like two or three inches left of headroom here. Forget the headroom in the back. There, We had someone sitting back there and they pretty much have to, you know, scrunch Turn down a bit. Head a little bit, yeah, like slouch in the seat. Which yeah. you can't even really slouch in the seat because the leg room is so bad. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah, coupe, obviously, if you do want something to carry more than two people around in, then I don't know why you would get this. Just get the LS or something. Um, but, yeah, the seats... These seats, they're almost like race seats. The side bolsters on these are massive, and I mean, they're extremely comfortable for someone like me and him, but if you weigh more than probably like 215 pounds, you're not really going to fit into these seats. They're obviously electric seats. They're adjustable forwards, backwards, you know, front and back. They're not like those fancy like 25-way adjustable seats that you find in like a S-Class or something like that, but you know, they're still adjustable and you can find a uh, comfortable seating position pretty easily. Yeah, this thing pulls that. Yeah. And the brakes. Oh yeah, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I can feel my face <laughs> oh, getting like uh... pulled, like the skin getting like pulled off my yeah. face. That pulled some serious G's right there. <laughs> and then uh, you heard the transmission shift, right? Yeah, because so Sport cause Plus. Yeah. Sport Plus, it'll shift the transmission really aggressively. It thinks you're on a track, so it wants to keep you in the highest gear possible. And oh man, the brakes, the Brembo's on here are just like amazing. Once he hit about 4,000 RPM, the car all of a sudden it got a lot louder, and that's that artificial interior noise that uh, we mentioned. So, I mean, it's nice to have, but again, I wish the car was just naturally loud like that. Um, but it's kind of weird how it just, it's like an on and off switch, you know, like all of a sudden at 4,000, it's just there. Third gear, give it a little bit of gas. It's a transmission yeah. that in Sport Plus, it's better at higher RPMs and when you're mm -hmm. pushing the car to its limits. Uh, Obviously, at lower speeds, this is still a very good and smooth transmission. It's not like the uh, Gallardo at lower <laughs> speeds, but just kind of a comparison to uh, how the transmission functions, not necessarily the smoothness of it. Yeah, it's uh, it's when you're lazy on the throttle, the transmission is a little lazy, you know, it doesn't need to shift hard. Yeah, that was a good comparison that you made. When you're lazy, the car's transmission is lazy. pound car so it's not gonna take a turn like you know some super lightweight track focused machine but but it still handles really well surprisingly yeah. and with these tires especially these tires make a lot of uh, difference to with the, the way they grip and everything I'll just rev up the gears here a bit you're not on it when you're 
lazy with it. You know, it's it's a little slow, and you know that's all right. We haven't even mentioned really what the transmission is. It's an eight-speed torque converter automatic, and you have your option. You obviously have your park reverse neutral drive, and then you have push it over in the manual, and then you can shift from the shift knob down here. And it also has paddle shifters over here, which are very subtle, but at the same time aggressive. Also, another thing I don't like on this is the paddle shifters are wheel mounted, and I didn't understand okay. what the problem was between the column mount and wheel mounted before this, but when you're turning all the way, like you should be nine and three, right? When you're performance driving. Yeah. Um, when you're turning all the way, it's hard to click the paddle shifter, honestly, with your outstretched hand. So, it, it would be better if they were column mounted, but you know. A lot of people try to compare this car to the Lexus LFA, and you know, you can't really do something like that because the LFA was a limited production run car. I think they made 500 of them, and it was, you know, had that big screaming V10. You know, it was a supercar. And this, I mean, a $75,000 car isn't isn't at a supercar price level, so, I mean, I don't know why people try and compare it to that. You know, obviously it's slower than the LFA. It's mass produced, so it's not in that same like limited production run echelon as the LFA. You can't compare those two uh, fairly, you know, they're just two different cars. If you guys are interested in buying an RCF, let me give you a little advice, okay. MSRP on a new one is 75,000 which is, I don't know if the car is worth 75,000 to be honest, but you can pick them up with like 5,000, 7,000 miles a year later for like 55, you know, in the in the low 50s. So basically new, you know, under 10,000 yeah. miles. With a warranty still. Yeah. I um, hope you guys like this video of the uh, Lexus RCF. Um, I'm hoping to do a couple more videos on this car in the future, probably not right now, but uh, it's a great car. Uh, he loves it, his mom loves it, his dad loves it, so definitely a good decision if you're out there. I mean, like he said, $53,000, that's base Corvette range, and this thing is at least as fast as a Corvette, I mean, and you get all this luxury and stuff with it, so, I mean, a great car, it's, he got it for a bargain, so, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, with his lemonade stand. <laughs> My lemonade stand. Oh, wait. No, it's my milkshake. Oh, your milkshakes? Did Wait. your milkshake?